Thank you so much, Marina and, and Dan, for the invitation. Thanks uh, for coming on uh, to listen to this talk this morning. Uh, so I was given the topic of kind of other procedures, and I don't have any great technical tips or vi cool videos because these are typically not things I would do in my practice. But so I'll just share with you some of the some of the data that's out there around some of these other options. I don't have any relevant disclosures for this particular talk. So what, I know this is a talk about conversions, but um, when you're talking about the band, there is a body of literature out there to say that you can salvage the band and do rebanding and basically convert it to another technique or another type of band. And then uh, the other two topics I'll cover briefly are uh, gastric plication, greater curvature plication after banding to try to salvage some weight loss, and then uh, more malabsorptive procedures with a band in place. And so these are just ways to try to salvage the band. If the patient likes their band, they want to keep it, but they need more therapy, uh, these are potential options to have in your toolbox. When we're talking about saving the band, these are patients who clearly either have a technical issue with the band, a slip, a prolapse, or some of these other uh, complications that have occurred, as, as you've seen in previous talks, uh, or, um, uh, or they just need, you know, it's hard to say they would get additional therapy from putting a new band in, but there, there is some, some data out there that, up, you know, sort of upgrading their band into the newer versions, the higher volume, lower pressure bands may have some benefit. But what I'll really talk about here is data that you'll, um, whoops, let me back that up, let me back that up. Your prior slide on that. Anyway, so the, uh, the data I was going to show you from that, I, I, we don't have to back it up, but... Uh-huh. Oh, on this guy here? There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Now we're going the wrong direction. Okay. So the, most of the data around salvaging band comes from Australia, uh, from Dr. O'Brien's group, uh, and they looked at their 15-year data and all their band patients, they had over 3,000 patients and about 700 patients who had 10 years of follow-up. Uh, and, and I put this data out there to... So you use the clicker right here, not the mouse. Okay. I put this data up here just to demonstrate that, you know, this is potentially an option. What they demonstrated in long-term follow-up was, uh, you know, 47% excess weight loss at 15 years, but relatively small numbers of patients who had made it that far into their follow-up period. Um, but average, you know, around 10, 10 years, uh, 50, 45, 50 percent excess weight loss was what they're showing. And as you know, this is data that has really not really been reproduced elsewhere in the, in the world. Their revisions were primarily done for uh, mechanical issues, uh, proximal enlargement, erosions, port and tubing problems, and not specifically for weight regain as a specific indication. Uh, they had a very low explant rate of 5.6%. Uh, and, you know, when we're talking about conversions, really their early experience, as you know, was perigastric technique. And they, a lot of these patients ended up getting converted to a pars flaccida technique uh, with a new band, and they were able to salvage the weight loss in those patients. And so um, what, I guess the take-home point from this is if, you, if the patient likes their band and they're having some problems with the band, one option would be to offer them, you know, another band and replace the band in a, in a, in a normal position. And according to this data, you could support that by saying that there's really no increased morbidity and that the long-term weight loss would be similar for those patients who've had uh, required a revision of their band. Now, as you know, these are patients who typically have responded well to the band and, and, and are, have responded to that type of therapy, and there's an argument can, that can be made for that. Uh, those that haven't responded, I don't think that same argument can be made, and this is probably does not data that would apply to those patients who've just not done well with their band. Other data has shown that, you know, patients who have a revision, uh, a revision uh, versus a conversion, you can see that here the, the uh, folks that had a revision at baseline with a BMI of, of 43 uh, went on to have a uh, revision, meaning they got another band placed at a BMI of 36, wanted to get some more weight loss did not offer them a huge benefit in terms of uh, additional weight loss by just having a new band put, put in with just another BMI drop in their, in their weight uh, versus a conversion, which got modest but a little bit more weight loss uh, with converting it to another procedure. I'll jump to plication. Um, as some of you may know, we at our center did greater curvature plications in a couple trials about seven, eight years ago. Uh, had, a, had a reasonable experience with that, but uh, it turns out this Plication is a very challenging technical operation, more than you would think, and it also, um, you know, has its unintended, sort of unintended complications in terms of some mechanical and anatomic issues. And so, 
this idea of doing a placation to salvage a band, I think, has lost lost favor. But at the time, placation was of more interest. Uh, people were doing this in, a, in an attempt to try to salvage a band. So this is a study uh, that showed that in patients who had some uh, prolapse or pouch dilation with a, a, a band, they could take the band out, basically placate that stomach in, uh, do a greater curvature plication, fix the hiatal hernia if present, and then put a band over the plication. So again, you're talking about combining two operations that are not necessarily individually very effective, and actually you've got a, a mechanical problem with pouch dilation above the band here, and you've kind of just moved the problem south a little bit, and you reposition the band, and then you plicate the stomach. Um, so again, it's, it was tried, people have have a, um, some experience with this, but I, again, when I look through the literature, there's not a ton of experience about uh, salvaging bands with plication. In this particular study, the patients had pr fairly low BMIs to begin with, and they had modest decreases with the band alone, and then when they went to get on their, uh, to get their plication, again, you saw pretty good excess BMI loss um, uh, with, you know, medium to short-term follow-ups. Uh, but small number, small, small number of patients, and I think one of the things we learned about combining these two operations is over time, you get a lot of anatomic changes in the stomach that um, require repair, either prolapse of the plication or herniation of the plication through the band, lots of things that happen that you, you may have not expected. Um, and so in the small series of patients that they did this in, they were able to demonstrate some weight loss. Um, and what essentially they showed was that the band became really less uh, necessary. Once they did the plication, they basically were able to take most or all of the fluid out of the bands, and so it begs the question: uh, Why not just do a, convert it to a plication and leave the and take the band out of the picture? But uh, anyway, that's the series that's that's out there currently. I'll jump finally to conversion to B BPD and DS. Uh, this is a systematic review uh, that found 71 patients in the literature who had a band to a, a biliopancreatic diversion of duodenal switch. Before the revisional surgery, the BMI was about 41 uh, in this particular group. And this systematic review looked at bands to sleeves and bands to bypasses. I just pulled out the DS uh, data. With short-term follow-up, uh, the BMI dropped to about 33, uh, with excess weight loss of 47%. So again, you've got a group of patients who just probably are a little more refractive to therapy in general. If they're needing a revision, you've already selected out patients who may not respond to that second or third operation as you would hope, but uh, certainly not typical BP BPD weight loss uh, in the early, in the early uh, time period after surgery. But uh, at two years, about 78% excess weight loss, which is pretty reasonable for a DS. And that, um, you know, if you compare all the different conversions, certainly with BPD, DS, you're going to get uh, significantly more weight loss. Uh, the challenges, as was discussed earlier, have, have to do with the long-term complications. And this is a small study from George Fielding in which he had patients who either had abandoned and converted them to a, a BPDDS or had a BPDDS patient who needed more uh, therapy and added a band to that. Um, and so, again, all these iterations have been tried. Uh, I think if you add a malabsorptive procedure to anything, it's going to sort of trump whatever you have in place already. And so uh, you, have, uh, you have a much more powerful operation you're offering. Uh, and it you know, begs the question, is the band even necessary uh, at all? Uh, but in this small series, he was able to show that uh, with uh, minimal morbidity, they were able to either add a band to a, a DS or add a DS to a band and achieve some uh, reasonable weight loss in the short term. And this is a last uh, study I'll show, which just shows that a comparison between gastric bypass and DS patients who have a band uh, in place. Uh, if you convert it to a, a DS, you get more excess weight loss. It looks like they're about the same, but the, B, the DS patients had a higher BMI to begin with, and so they lost overall uh, more weight to achieve that, that lower uh, BMI overall. So in summary, there's certainly evidence, some evidence, it's fairly weak evidence and mostly anecdotal and short case series to support salvaging uh, or converting the band to some of these other operations. There is a larger body of evidence to support salvaging the band, but I would emphasize that that would be appropriate in patients who have had a good response to the band in the first place. Uh, conversion to BPD offers the greatest weight loss, but probably carries the greatest long-term uh, nutritional uh, uh, um, risk. Uh, the addition of a gastric pl plication can promote some additional weight loss, but as I mentioned, there's going to be some unintended consequences of combining these procedures, uh, and this is not something I think most of us would recommend at this point. 
And as you've heard throughout the session this morning, I think if you are going to convert a band to something else, the data more, much more strongly supports converting it to a gastric bypass uh, or a sleeve gastrectomy. Thanks very much.